Welcome to the Quarantine Basement of Six Figure Journey. I'm Bob Brooks, and today we want to talk about fear and how to overcome it. But before I get started, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So let's talk about fear and let's talk about how we're going to overcome it. So many of the fears today or in our lives are basically made up fears that we've made up ourselves. And there's so many of them, you know, the fear of rejection, the fear of failure, the fear of making the wrong decision, the fear they won't like me, the fear I'm not good enough, the fear I'm not smart enough. And all these things are things we play out in our head. And we can start very early in our life with some of these fears and carry them with us through our lives. There's a lot of high school kids right now that have immense pressure on them to make a decision. And it's us adults that are asking it. Career counselors, teachers, parents, aunts, uncles. So, what are you going to do after high school? What do you want to be when you grow up? Where are you going to go to school? What's your major going to be? And for a 17-year-old person that has done nothing but go to school, hang out with friends, and have a childhood, this is a huge thing. This is a life decision they're making. And there's a fear. What if I make the wrong decision? What if I go down the wrong road and I'm not happy? I don't know what to do. And it's hard. And that's a big fear for them. And I'm going to talk about how they can challenge that fear and get over it as we go on. But that's a big fear they're facing right now. I had a fear in my business of failure of being online. And I knew I didn't want to fail, so I wouldn't quit. But I was struggling, and I, and I knew why. And it was because I was afraid to be on camera. I always thought I had a radio face and not a camera face. <laughs> and here I am on the camera because I don't care anymore what my face looks like. It's the message I'm putting out. And that's what really matters, and I overcame that fear, and we're going to talk about that some more too. But I had a fear of being on the camera, so I always procrastinated. I made excuses. Oh, I don't have the right background, the right equipment. I don't have the right office. I don't have the right clothes. I don't have the right material. I, I'm not as good as the guys I'm seeing on camera. Some of them guys got hundreds of thousands of views. I can't be like them. Well, of course not. I haven't been doing it for 10 years. I've been sitting around making excuses why I can't do it. And the only way I'm going to get there is if I do it. And that's part of how you overcome fear. And we'll hit that later. But those fears prevent you from moving forward. Fear, I've seen people afraid to go get the job they really want. Because they're afraid their current boss will find out. Or they're afraid they won't even get the job. And their boss finds out and they lose that job. So they never go after that job. They settle for the job they're at. They don't ask for the promotion. They don't ask for the raise because we're afraid they'll sell nil. We're afraid we'll look silly. We're afraid they won't like us. There's so many fears. We don't ask people out when we're younger because we're afraid she'll say no. So we never get the chance to date the girl or the guy that we think we should because we're afraid they'll say no. And these fears, the worst part about fear is if you don't do something about the fear, they get bigger. They get bigger in your life. And I'll use the example of my two kids learning to ride a bike. My daughter, we got her, she's the older one. We got her her bicycle with the training wheels on it. And she learned how to ride. She was on it doing well, you know, leaning side to side, of the wheels catch her. And then she gets old enough and I'm going to take the training wheels off. Sweetheart, it's time for you to learn how to ride a bike. She's kind of excited because dad rides a bike. She's going to ride a big bike now. So Mom's got her helmet, her elbow pads, her knee pads, and her little wrist pads, and off we go. I take the training wheels off, and I'm going to hold her seat behind her and run alongside her. Very painful as you get older on the back, but I'm running alongside her, and she, I'm holding her up and holding her up, and I can start to feel her get her balance. And, you know, I let go a little bit, grab, let go a little bit, grab, and then all of a sudden I feel she's got it, so I start to let go, and she's doing great. And I make two mistakes here. And the first one is I yell, sweetie, you're doing it. The minute I yelled that, She's got her handlebars. She turns her head to look at me and turn the handlebars too. She did the whole twist thing and all of a sudden, boom, down she goes. Scared her losing control and starts crying right away. And she's a little kid. She starts crying. Now, this is my little girl and I'm freaking out because I'm the one that called her and made her look. So I'm feeling bad. So I run over and I'm comforting her. I'm picking her up. I'm holding her. She's crying. She's not hurt, but I'm like, you want to go inside? Second mistake. She, yes. So inside we go. Doesn't want to get back out and try the rest of the day. I feel bad. I don't like seeing my daughter cry. So, okay, we'll get back to it next weekend. Next weekend comes. She wants the training wheels back out and she does not want to ride that bike at all. Never wants to ride them. That fear over the week had grown and grown because all she thought about was, oh God, I got to do it again. I got to do it again. I got to do it again. And that fear grew. So by next Saturday, it was really hard. And I had to be a little tougher now and say, no, we got to do this. We got to do this. And I had to encourage her and work her through it. It took two weeks to teach her how to ride a bike. 
and when it was done, it was very satisfying for her. But that fear in that time was such a hard two weeks. Now let's fast forward to my son. A year and a half later, I've got him on the bike. I made the same first mistake again. When I got him going, I yelled, son, you're doing it. Because I'm all proud of it. And sure enough, and he wipes out. Well, I didn't make the second mistake this time. I grabbed him, dusted him off, put him back on the bike and said, it's okay. We can do this next time. If you hear something, you don't turn and look with your head and hands. You got to keep your handlebars straight. We'll learn to do this. And by the end of the day, he knew how to ride the bike. The fear never got out of control because he didn't have time to dwell on it. So let's talk about how we handle all these different fears of failure and all this other stuff. You got to, we, we, we got to look at the fear in a different way. All our fears are the what if it goes wrong? What if the bad thing happens to me? What if the plane crashes? What if I don't get the job? What if my business fails? Well, nobody watches this video. Well, we gotta look at it the other way and say, what if 10 people watch this video and tell 10 others? What if we get on that plane and it takes me to Hawaii and I have a great time with my wife? We gotta start looking. What if I go for that other job and they say, yeah, we'd love to have you. We've been looking for you. What if you ask that person out you want? Wow. And you high school people, what if you just make the decision to go to a, any school or any degree? You just made that decision. Number one, you're going to feel better you made your decision. And number two, you can always change. It's not the end of the world. And it does feel like it when you're in making that decision because everybody is putting that pressure on you. And I see it in my son. My son, it's okay. Whatever you want to do. You know you want to go to school, right? So he's like, yeah, I want to go to school. He loves school. He's been in a Christian school all his life. He loves school. I said, so you know you want to go. So just pick one. Pick one where you think you'd like to be. And then go and pick a degree. And if you like school so much, why not pick an education degree? You can always switch. But just pick a degree. It doesn't have to be final yet. Life changes. And even if you graduated, you can always go back and change and get another major. You can take a major and a minor. Life isn't over at this decision. So we have to face these fears with number one, looking at the positive side of what if it goes right? What if it goes well? What if everything is beautiful? That's not saying it always will, but that's life. Life has bumps, life is hard. But if we look at it in the right way, we're at least gonna make a move because that's the second part of overcoming fear and that's to take action. Take action destroys fear. Because once you take action toward a fear, it dwindles. Just like on the bike with my daughter, when we finally got her to take that action, the fear went away. And you're hearing my dog back in the background. But the bigger the fear, the bigger the action. So I say massive action. With my YouTube, to get over that fear, I finally had to do a video a day until it got comfortable and I didn't mind sitting in front of the camera anymore. I had to take massive action. And if you want to do something like an at-home business, you need to take massive action. You need to get the ball rolling because the longer you stay here, the more fear you can have that it's not working. So you need to take that massive action and get things rolling, get some activity in your business. So you want to take massive action. So if you're going to overcome fear, you want to look at it from the positive angle. What if it goes well? And you want to take action to overcome it and just do it. Just get out there and do it. If you want to ask somebody on a date, just ask them. And you get to know, so what? At least you did it and you're not going to live in that fear. Because let me tell you what happens to fear over time. It grows into an ant, a big monster, but in the long term, I'm 59 now. What happens to fears when you let them grow over a lifespan? And let's say you settle and stick with that job. It turns into bitterness. It turns into resentment. It turns into anger because you look back, what if now? What if I had done it? And it's no longer... What if this happens? It's what if I had done it? So you've got to take action against any fear. But I want to talk at the end here. I want to talk about the one big fear that will destroy you forever. And it almost destroyed me. I told you in the beginning I was in the Navy and I lived kind of a wild life. And I wasn't proud of a lot of the things I did. And I heard a lot of people just trying to take care of me. I wasn't a good person. And I had this fear of God. And it wasn't a good fear of God because it was a fear of God that I didn't want to go before him. I didn't want to be close to him because I felt filthy. And I do know this. If you never go before God and confess your sins and ask for his son, Jesus Christ, to be your savior, you're not going to get to heaven. That fear was going to keep me out of heaven and send me to hell. And it was all because I was afraid to talk to the God that loved me. As a child, there wasn't much love. I was afraid of love. 
because love to me was a scary thing because in love you get hurt. And many times you do. And we hurt others in love. But God loves us and he sent his, his son to the earth to take our punishment for sin because the, way, the wages of sin is death. We're all due death for the sin we've committed in our life. And we all sin. The Bible says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. So we've all sinned. We've all had bad thoughts somewhere against somebody else or something. So the only perfect person was Jesus, and that was the only sacrifice could, that could atone for our sins. And he came here willingly and went to the cross willingly to die for our sins. And all we have to do is confess our sins and ask Jesus into our lives, and he is faithful, and he forgives us, and we face that fear, and we see on the other side that it was the right thing, and it's better than anything we could have ever imagined. If you've never placed your, placed your faith in Jesus Christ, feel free to message me, feel free to call me, email me, comment on this video. I'd love to talk to you. But that's a big fear you don't want to let go. If you've got the fear of God that you're afraid to go home because you feel you're dirty, don't. There is no sin that can't be forgiven by God while you're still breathing on this earth. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.